Welcome to Insightful Tales. On this channel, we delve into the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with a video. I am Sophia, and my age is 21 years. I am currently pursuing computer science in college with a year left in my studies. Our tuition system operates yearly, typically around October, with fees being accepted within a specified period. If payment is delayed, no fee waiver is granted. In my case, if ignored, all my efforts to secure a fee waiver would be in vain. It may sound absurd, but so does the entire college and education system. Please understand how crucial this is to me. I am deeply committed to my career, to the extent that I have sacrificed my social circle for this degree. You may label me a nerd, but I am proud of my dedication. As you can see from the title, the incident I'm about to recount is not a one-time occurrence, but a recurring problem stemming from the selfishness and entitlement of both my parents and brother, a challenge I've faced since day one. My father manages my grandparents' textile export and import business. My grandfather devoted his life to building it, reaping substantial financial rewards. With my grandparents having only one son, my father, it's natural for him to inherit the business. However, due to my grandmother's strained relationship with my mother, they hesitate to entrust her with the business. Both being single children, my parents desired a single child, hence my twin brother and me. I was unplanned and nearly given up for adoption, but my grandmother insisted on caring for me. Thus, my grandparents have been my primary caregivers since I was two, providing the warmth of family that I've craved. Essentially, I am the unwanted child in my mother's eyes. She believes that a second child brings trouble and hinders the first child's potential. Moreover, a male heir is preferred over a female. Today, my brother and I turn 21. Despite being twins, my brother and I have never shared a positive relationship. He never defended me against our parents or stood up for me. Instead, he indulged in bullying me, making my life difficult. While we share the same age, the disparity lies in our pursuits. I'm diligently working towards building a future, whereas he dropped out of high school and indulged in a frivolous lifestyle, dating younger girls yet he is consistently favored over me. Though I once hoped for my parents' pride and recognition, I've come to accept that it won't happen. Today, on our birthday, I continue with my routine of working on projects and internships. However, today, of all days, I made a careless mistake. I forgot some crucial documents needed to pay my fees, and it's the deadline day. Frantically, I called everyone, including our farmhouse landlines, but received no response. The disappointment, hurt, and anger I felt were profound. As a last resort, I contacted my grandparents, the only ones I trusted. Thankfully, they acted swiftly, sending someone to retrieve the papers. My anger dissolved into relief, but upon meeting my grandparents, it transformed into pain. Back at their house, I experienced the worst mental breakdown of my life. I could feel their hearts breaking as I ranted about the mistreatment I endured and the celebratory atmosphere surrounding my impending ruin. Grandpa, unaware of the day's events, was shocked to learn about my brother's dropout. A somber silence enveloped us for what felt like an eternity. Then, in a dramatic gesture, my grandpa tore up a paper, signaling his decision to alter his will. He instructed his lawyer to remove my brother from his inheritance, diverting his share to my future children or charity if I have none. Though I feel guilty for potentially robbing my brother of his fortune, a part of me relishes the vindication. Tonight, there's a party where my grandpa plans to present his revised will as a gift to both of us. I anticipate their reactions, knowing it may mark the last time I see my mother genuinely smile. Enjoying the story so far? Show your support by liking and subscribing to our channel. Now let's dive back into the story. I may sound vindictive, but she somewhat deserves to lose that smug smirk she always wears whenever someone mentions her son. Part of me feels guilty. Part of me feels avenged and oddly, I feel at peace. I'll keep you all updated on what happens after the party. It's bound to be a roller coaster ride with me having the last laugh. So it turned out better than I imagined. The main issue here isn't the money, but the way I've been treated just because I was born as an extra child. We all got ready and dressed up. It was my birthday after all, and I needed to have my share of fun too. My brother was heavily drunk throughout the party, which only added fuel to the fire. Nonetheless, we cut cakes and had fun. Grandpa introduced me to many people, emphasizing how proud he was of me and my achievements. I may sound conceited about them, but it's okay. 
I know where to draw the line. When only close relatives remained, Grandpa began a speech about his whole legacy and family life, which was truly impressive. Then he shifted to praise everyone in our family. However, his tone changed when addressing my parents and brother. I shouldn't have been having this much fun, but it was genuinely amusing. He expressed pride in having a toxic daughter-in-law and a son with no identity, who together crafted a son who excelled in being an alcoholic, good-for-nothing dropout. It was satisfying to witness my mother's head down in shame as she walked the walk of shame beside my father. Overall, everything was enjoyable. The announcement of me receiving the entire fortune triggered both of my parents, leading to a heated argument. Nevertheless, they were simply handed an envelope of money, enough to send their perfect child to a rehab center. That's all for today. I'll keep everyone updated. Oh my God, it's been quite a while since my birthday. I'm now 21 years and eight months old and each day feels like a fresh start. I'm truly grateful for the support I receive from the Reddit community. Your wishes, comments, and even the trolls targeting my parents and brother are incredible to read. Apologies for not updating sooner. Life keeps me busy. I've managed to assemble a good team to start my startup. Back to the update. My grandparents have recently transformed the party farmhouse into a vegetable and orange field, where they spend a lot of time together. They occasionally invite me for snacks and tea, providing a peaceful atmosphere. My parents tried to manipulate me into signing everything over to my brother. However, with my grandparents' approval, I've cut ties with them. As soon as my father retires, my cousin, along with another promising individual, will take over his position to maintain grandpa's legacy. Everything is going well, and I've also started socializing a bit and forming healthy friendships. As for my brother, he's out of rehab and trying to mend relations with me, which I won't allow anytime soon. Additionally, he's gotten his 17-year-old girlfriend pregnant. She's no saint, but my heart goes out to her. However, I refuse to be involved in their mess. This marks the end of this chapter of my life. See you all soon and I hope you stay well. All's well that ends, right? I'm glad that your grandparents took a stand for you and helped you out. Make sure you take good care of them well. Your brother gives off a good-for-nothing villain vibe. Well, anyway, I'm happy everything went well for you and don't listen to your parents. They are plain toxic. It's completely okay to be proud of your goals. Next story. I'm a 28-year-old woman and I've been dating my boyfriend, 29, for a little over two and a half years. When we began to get serious, I told him I didn't want to have kids and wasn't interested in that, as it wouldn't be fair to string him along. When things began to get serious, he wanted kids, but we talked it over, and he decided he could live without kids. Things were fine until we were visiting my family a few days ago for my dad's birthday. He saw some old pictures of me when I was 20 and heavily pregnant. He was upset and asked me what this was and thought that I'd had a child and gave them up. I explained to him that my oldest sister and her husband had been struggling with fertility and that she'd had several miscarriages, so I offered to carry their child for them, and my seven-year-old niece was the result of this. I in no way feel maternal towards her. She is their biological child, and I've never felt I was anything but the handy oven for that bun. I never brought it up because I didn't think it mattered, and it was so long ago that it wasn't anyone else's business. He, however, feels differently, and when we left, he told me I should have told him and said how it wasn't fair. I'd be willing to give my sister a child but wouldn't even consider having one with him. I got upset as there was a big difference between carrying a child and raising a child, and I told him as much. I told him I was sorry for not telling him. I honestly hadn't felt it was his business. As it had been years before we got together, I then reminded him how he had been the one to say that he could live without children. As I'd warned him long ago, he's still upset with me. I honestly didn't think I did anything wrong here. Ada? Since people keep asking, I'm including this information in the post. Yes, it's preferred that you be over 21 and have had at least one child to be a surrogate. However, in our country, doctors will judge on a case-by-case -case situation and will sometimes allow it so long as the surrogate is over 18, even if they have never had a child before. We were one of those cases, though they tried to discourage it. My sister didn't want to use a stranger. However, as she was scared in our country, the person who carries a child has all the rights. If they decided to keep the child, my sister and her husband could do nothing about it. I was someone she trusted. I'm going to say ESH here and downvote me all you want. Here's why. 
you and your boyfriend discuss children, and you had to assume that he would see those pictures if he stuck around long. Your pregnancy should have been mentioned. He reacted on a big scale and that is understandable, but he is saying you had a baby for them. You should be willing to have one for me too, which is not cute. You both made the not H, but the wishful mistake of thinking that he could just be okay without kids when you both know that he wants them. He's not okay with it, and if you don't have kids, he will resent you. If you choose to have kids for him, you will resent him, and possibly also the kids. Please think this through carefully. NTA. Were you a gestational surrogate? And if so, does he understand that your niece is not your biological child? That possible confusion is the only explanation I can think of for why he would react as such unless he legitimately thought the only reason you didn't want kids was that you didn't want to deal with pregnancy. As someone who doesn't want kids myself, the idea of still technically making and carrying one for someone else would be more problematic for me than the idea of being a gestational surrogate because of the reasons I don't want children. So if you're a traditional surrogate, I can slightly see how he might be confused and frustrated by that confusion, but you're still not an AH. You're upfront and honest about your plans with him from the start. It's not your job to make sure that he knows every detail of your past. Next story. I have been dating my girlfriend for eight months. Things have been going so well that when she started a project based in my part of the city, she decided to stay at my place temporarily rather than do the daily commute. I noticed that when she showers, she has the water so hot that steam billows from the bathroom when she opens the door. It leaves everything in the bathroom wet. I have been telling her to use the dehumidifier in the bathroom as she showers. She told me that she showers with the window open and it turns on afterward because the air was too humid for the dehumidifier. I put my foot down and told her that it wasn't optional and she ended up breaking the dehumidifier with the steam. I told her that enough was enough. And then if there was no dehumidifier, she would have to shower at a normal temperature like everyone else does. When she comes out of the bathroom, her skin is red. What she did instead was she started locking herself in the bathroom while the steam dissipated so I wouldn't catch her turning my bathroom into a sauna. Well, last week I had enough of it. I took the lock off the bathroom door. The toilet is in a separate room so there is still complete privacy when using the toilet, by the way. Now she can't steam out my entire bathroom without me knowing. I knock before entering and make sure it's not that steamy in the bathroom and that the temperature of the water is normal. She hasn't said anything about it, but since I did that, her mood has been low with me. She started spending weekends at her place and she's slowly been taking her stuff with her. I told her that I didn't do it to be nasty, but the hot showers were damaging my bathroom and probably her health too. She just says, okay, and it's fine. I'm a controlling a-hole. Forced my girlfriend to break my dehumidifier after she warned me it would break it and then blamed her for the damage anyway. Took the locks off the door. And I'm treating her like a toddler who can't make her own decisions. Now I'm surprised because she's slowly moving out and doesn't want to put up with my controlling behavior anymore. Aita, in case you couldn't gather it by this point, yeah, YTA, YTA. This is extremely controlling and weird. Be honest and admit that this has nothing to do with her health or putting herself in danger and everything to do with you wanting to control her behavior. Seriously, who takes a lock off the shower room door? Get a new dehumidifier if you're so worried about the bathroom. Also, it's scientifically proven that women prefer hotter showers than men because women have more constricted blood vessels that position blood closer to the surface of the skin. In the end, both stories shed light on the complexities of relationships and the need for open communication and understanding. In the first story, despite the initial friction and misunderstandings between the couple regarding their views on children and surrogacy, there's hope for resolution. They have the opportunity to revisit their discussions, clarify their intentions, and truly understand each other's perspectives. It's a reminder that relationships require ongoing effort and empathy to navigate through challenging situations. As for the second story, it's a sobering reminder of the consequences of controlling behavior and the importance of respecting each other's boundaries. The protagonist's actions, while driven by concern for their property and health, ultimately drove a wedge between them and their girlfriend. It serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of imposing one's will on others without considering their feelings and autonomy. In both cases, there's room for growth and learning. It's up to the individuals involved to reflect on their actions communicate openly, and strive for mutual respect and understanding in their relationships. Thanks for reading. How did you find the story? Let me know in the comments below.
Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more awesome stories like this. Your feedback and support mean a lot.